Hello, it's Jesse here, and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage, and we're going to be working on the 1940 Harley, uh, flathead UH again, the big twin 80, and we're going to work on getting the spark con spark control cable to hooked up to the distributor timer, and then we're going to hook up the throttle control cable to, to make the Bendix work, and then we're going to do all the stuff that's involved to getting all that all set up, and then we're going to move on to the regulator there and get it all hooked up. Um, that's the last bit of the wiring we need to do, then we'll run around the entire frame and and put some of the the fancy cloth wrap to all clean it up um, after that we'll work on putting the exhaust on putting oil in it hooking up the carburetor and then we should be able to fire it up for the first time that's the goal here we'll see how far we get but anyway let's go ahead and get started so we started routing the cables here we got the manual advance cable here the I'll route it up here and we got the it hooked into this bracket here and we've got the right kind of pull and we had to trim a little bit but um you can tell that we yeah go ahead and move it you can tell that we're in the quadrant here it's hitting both ends and it's not lifting like it was in that in that for that one video a while back when we were having the problems using this bracket eliminated that this is the older 38 style bracket 38 39 bracket anyway um getting ready to do the the Bendix over there. We're running, we're running the throttle cable now. So we have the tank up there. We're making sure that we have the, the enough free play or enough looseness of this cable so it doesn't bind on anything. We're thinking it should be just about like that. So we got it routed. This could come down a little more. We got it routed coming to the inside of the uh, spark control cable. And then the throttle control cable here is coming down like that. It kind of loops a little bit to give a little bit of a, a, a distance from the head. And we might be able to come down, but we want to keep it kind of away from the head. Hopefully this Bendix works out really well because we're going to modify this cable to where it, it would work for the Bendix. And we don't know if it'll work for any other carburetor we have to use if this doesn't work out. But we do like that the throttle's on this side. And we like that this this bracket here for the cable the metal part fits just fits inside there it's like perfect so <laughs> it's gonna work out hopefully now we're gonna just double check using the put the tank up here real quick just to see what it looks like so we gotta make sure this hooks on the other side of the cable there here we are it goes there, the bolt goes up under here, and then there's your cable. See, we got plenty of room. We could go up higher, but I don't think we need a loop up there any more than we need to, so it's going to work good. So we're going to end up cutting it about right here, and then letting the, the metal cable part hang out a ways so it can hook into the mount right here. Now the, the Bendix has a three quarter inch pull travel and our spiral on our throttle actually moves the, the cable a whole inch. So we have plenty of, we have plenty of movement so we have no problem hitting the throttle stop. <laughs> but I probably won't ride it like that, but you know what I mean. So we kind of customized the routing of the cable here. We were gonna run that taller bracket but um, it was pulling it down too close to the head and it made more of a 90 degree turn here right away. With it being up here and wire tied up here under this lower part of the backbone, it actually gives more of a later curve and more of a straighter kick down into the, into the carb. And we even added this extra bracket here just to pick this up a little bit farther. The whole theory with this was is just to get this to be more straight when it pulls instead of all bent and curved right away. We were noticing that when we had just this bracket on here and it was binding. So now when we twist the, actually twist the throttle grip and it actually pulls more straight and functions easier and more, more feels better with less effort. Yeah. And we still able to, we're able to hit the stop and then when we go we back it off, of course it goes up against the throttle stop there. So this will work out pretty good because when we open it up, it actually opens up all the way. I guess my uh, light isn't on, but um, 
just here, we'll come back to that. There we go, we got light on it now. There we go, so you can see the throttle butterfly back there all the way open and all the way closed, all the way open and all the way closed. So it's will work out great, hopefully as long as it, as long as it functions when we go to fire it up. So otherwise we'll have to modify it and get a linkered on here or something. <laughs> but I really wanna run the Bendix, so that's the whole purpose of this, because I just like the Bendix carburetor. So we're getting ready to hook up the regular right now. So this is supplied by uh, Samwell Supplies. And so far what we've done is we got the regulator on the, the bike, on the motor. And we have, so it goes in phases here on how to hook it all up. So we'll just kind of read through this real quick. Um, phase one is preparation. Of course, disconnect the negative pole on the battery. Um, install two brush generator. It has to be a two brush generator for the regulator. We've talked about this before in some of the other videos where we're doing a conversion and all that stuff. Um, so we didn't, we're not using the three brush generator on this bike. So this is compatible, and two brush generator works anyway, and it's compatible with any UL, EL, FL, WL bike. And we're running a 61, model 61 two brush generator. It, has, it actually has the, the bearing inside of it. Um, we've rebuilt that too, by the way. Um, so we don't have to worry about removing an old regulator or cut out. So, and of course it's clean. So we haven't, uh, haven't got it dirty yet. <laughs> Phase two is installation, installing it, of course, and hooking it up with the mount screws, attaching the wires. Um, talks about terminal one, connect red, black wire to the armature and the indicated A for relay and F for field on the, on the two brush generator. Um, of course they can be hooked up wrong. So you gotta make sure you're paying attention to what the generator set stamped into it, like an A or F for armature or field. Um, we'll show this all, but when we get it hooked up here, we'll show we'll go over it. Um, connect the black wire to the, to the dashboard generator indicating light. Uh, terminal two gets uh, supplied black wire to field pin indicated. Down here, so this is the one that's supplied with it. We have to hook this one up the field, it's the terminal two, and the rest of our wiring coming off the bike is all right here. Um, then it goes on to talk about removing or securely isolate the unnecessary green wire, only if it comes with a, if you have a three brush system. This of course is a three brush system, so we'll be we'll be uh, blocking that off and. Protecting it. It'll be isolating when it's green. Yeah, we'll be wrapping it up with like tape or something or heat shrink. Heat something. shrink, yeah, that's better. Uh, we'll be leaving the cover off, of course, like it says here. So when we go to turn it on, we're going to be looking for these LEDs. LED green, you're good. Install the cover and go for a red. <laughs> a red says something's wrong. No LED, something's wrong. So anyway, so so far we've got. Uh, the red and black, the black with the red tracer on the field. No, no, that was the one on the armature over there. It comes back to the front here, to our, to this one here in front, terminal one. And then, of course, we have our green wire down here we were just talking about. We're going to be uh, heat shrinking that one, and then we'll be hooking these other two up here now. So we need to make a black wire to go from field to terminal two here. To go from here to here. Yep. So on the other terminal over there, the other brass one right there. It's gonna be coming to here. And these two wires, this one's hot. This will be going to the this the terminal red here. One. Red, red one goes over here. Let's show the red here, number three. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, and then the black one's gonna be going up, up here, here to the yep, to the other one. To this one. So, so right now we're going to make our, our black wire. We'll be using some, or that one. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we'll got, be using some cloth I got cloth it the right wire. length already. All right, so. perfect. So, let's do that so quick. All we need is the ends. All right, we have the battery disconnected. And we got these wires all hooked up. So, coming off the, off the frame there, we are the frame loom. 
we have a red with white uh, tracer and a black with a white tracer. Uh, the red with the white tracer is looping around the front here and coming underneath and going to number uh, three, terminal three here on the regulator. And the black with the white tracer is coming around and shooting to the front here and going to terminal one. The black wire that we made, the solid black wire we made, is coming off the terminal two here and going to the generator on the field side. The black with the red tracer that came with the regulator is coming off of the armature side of the generator and hooking up to the front one here, number one terminal. And then the green wire back there, we have it, uh, we have it hink shrinked and, and kind of tied off right now. We're gonna probably not let it hang here. We'll do something with that later. But now we're gonna get ready to flash the generator. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. We have the battery hooked back up and we're gonna get ready to flash here. So with uh, flashing the generator, what we're trying to do is to make it charge properly. In the right direction. Right, we want it to charge with a negative ground oh. system, not a positive ground system. Right. And it, they can charge backwards and it makes it makes it not charge correctly. Now, in order to flash the coils, you always take the armature uh, terminal to the positive terminal. But everything has to be hooked up. And so you just touch and hold there is how I do it. And all it's going to do is uh, do a momentarily spark. See it? Yeah. That's all there is to it. And... Uh, yeah, it should charge now when we uh, get it running. Yep, that should be it. So finishing up here on the electrical system here. Uh, we're leaving the cover off yet for a while yet because uh, when it says in the instructions here that, like I was mentioning in the very beginning part of this, before we started all this, that if it's green, it's it's good to go. But you don't find that out until it's running. So we won't be able to find out until it's running if it's if it's hooked up properly or working right. But it's got to be hooked up right. <laughs> Because we went over it twice or three times, and then we made sure we had it all hooked up here, and I feel really good about it. Because turning the key on won't won't light this up. It only functions when it's actually operating under load from the generator. So I think I said that right. Anyway, so now we're gonna now that we got that all done, we're gonna work on trying to route the exhaust. So we go into that segment now. So we wanted to make sure we got these wires out of the way here because this port here, exhaust port here, comes right real close to this. And it shoots down between the, the two legs here on the frame and swings back underneath the motor. So we don't want these wires getting all burnt up. We haven't put oil in the tank yet. That's going to be at the end because we want to make sure that when this, this exhaust pipe comes out of this port, doesn't interfere with our oil line here. And it feels like it's going to miss it because... We kind of checked it with like a ruler and stuff. It's clear and clear, but we'll see when we get the pipes on here. So I'm going to get the pipes all dug out and get ready to start putting this all together. Here's the exhaust set for the for the flathead UL models, UH, ULH models, U models. Anyways, um, it's in black finish. Uh, they were not chrome back then, 40 and older for sure. And uh, we used some high heat barbecue paint on the the three pipes here. This one, the front header, front header pipe, the S pipe, and and the rear header pipe. And then I had got this nice uh, muffler, which has the this the patent stamp in it, and it is seam well seam welded here with the. Uh, with tax and stuff so this is a proper fit and look function and look the 40 muffler it has the the fan tail or the, or the rear fish tail not the rocket tip the rocket tip came out in 41 and went all the way to 49 until the cigar type came out in 50. anyway um we're gonna work on putting this on we got the, all the clamps sitting here in parkerized finish and the hardware right there in parkerized finish as well so here are the clamps for the exhaust system. Um, we have the front header pipe clamp system here. And this is the larger one that goes to the pipe, slides through here. This part and hooks to the frame. 
and gets held together with a bolt, tightening it up to secure it into the front head or front cylinder. And these two clamps here mount to the, the muffler itself and hold it to the frame. This reinforcement bracket goes to the back, the back bracket here on the frame and holds it tight, allowing it to lock it still when you tighten it up, just like that. This is the 41 and later style exhaust here. Here's the, here is the, the flathead style one here. Here, this is the knucklehead and possibly panhead stuff here. It's showing, but anyway, there's the reinforcement bracket, and there's our there's our uh, muffler brackets. All of our hardware is right here, ready to go, and there's the the front clamping system I was talking about, how it's laid out. So we're gonna get ready to put these parts on now. We got the exhaust pipes pushed up into the cylinders now and it clears the oil line really well in the back here. And then the front one of course is up in there as well. Uh, these pipes are made by Gasbox, which is a pretty good company and they are made to the exact specs of original. And they didn't fit in these aftermarket cylinders. So we had to clean them up a little bit and get it to fit in there. And originally, before we did that, they fit right in my original cylinder. So it's kind of too bad that these cylinders weren't the right dimension in the exhaust ports. But we got them in there good. They're kind of snug. Won't we have to worry about them falling out or anything loose. We're going to probably take them back out and paint that so it don't look like that. And then we'll put them back together the rest of the way. So we're ready to put oil in. And we're going to, for our break-in, we're going to use uh, Brad Penn 30 weight here. Break-in oil. It's zinc. Uh, that's why it's green, green oil. And uh, we're gonna, it's gonna sit around for a little while on the line so we can make sure that, I don't know, that's kind of our point, purpose of putting it in right now. But um, we're getting ready to pour it in here. A four quart four quart system so we're gonna put four quarts in of course there we go we do have the the drain plug tight and everything but you can kind of see how really green this stuff is and that's due to the high zinc content because a lot of the new oils for these older bikes they don't have zinc in them so we gotta make sure you get zinc and the reason for that is um with it being like the way the cams are and the zinc help penetrate the metal and keeps the wear factor from being high pretty much, right? Yep. But actually, I'm not so sure that the green is the zinc. Um, this used to be like castor oil of GTX years and years ago, and they were always a green oil. And the reason it was green is I... I, I was always led to believe that the, it's it's like a it's like a petroleum dye that they would put in it. So it was a trademark of theirs, mm -hmm. the green oil, and that's what it says right here, the green oil. And see, castor oil got bought out years ago, and and it was, castor oil came from Bradford, Pennsylvania. And so what happened after Castrol got sold off by the big company that owned it, the, the people that, that ran the refinery at, at Bradford bought, brought out their own oil. And, of course, they couldn't call it Castrol no more, so they called it Brad Penn. Now it's actually changed names again. But it's still the same oil, but now it's called Pen Grade One, and uh, so oh, like this has been there. sitting around for a while. But it's still it's new. It's an old container, yeah. But yeah, it's still, still new. Yeah, and it kind of like it says right here. And I had like you were, I was showing you that whole thing while he was talking, but it says right there, zinc <laughs> dialkylide ethophosphate, phosphate, uh, aka ZDDP. This is a superior oil film strength from pen grade based oils. Anyways, it's for those motors that actually have a need to break in on flat tappet cams. And 
hydraulic cams and hydraulic lifters and roller tappets all changed especially i've been going into details for and talked about this for hours but they got rid of the zinc when the catalytic converters came out and because there was clogging the catalytic converters and it was bad on the, and the, the new oil was bad on the motors so plain and simple yep <laughs> so we have the oil in there we got about three quarts in there now we're going to circulate get it running and let it circulate and then when it it's done and settles we'll know exactly the true fullness we need to be when we fill it we'll fill it the rest of the way and now that we got that we'll put the the plug back in the cap i mean in and then we'll move on to making sure the transmission has oil in it because we know we don't have any oil in there yet here we go here's the capacities for the motorcycle um oil tank showing at one gallon like i said transmission is one and a half pints which is equivalent to 24 ounces we're getting ready to put gear oil in the transmission and uh, we're going to be running 80-90 weight gear oil, multi-purpose GL4. Making sure we run GL4 because it's great for the bronze and brass bushings that are inside the transmissions. And uh, this this transmission is full of it. It's got a lot of bushings on there, on the, all the gears. There we are, we're filling her up now. about to the threads so it's pretty full but then again some of it might be like transferring over through that bearing yet so we're gonna let it sit for a while and see what we look like because we have a little bit left in cordons of 24 ounces so we got the oils in there and they're good they're gonna sit a while here and then what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna uh, paint it the, take these off paint the exhaust and put it back together and uh, just put it all together like it is and then fire it up here we're going to tentatively get this uh fit first just to make sure there ain't nothing else wrong with this uh this exhaust system before we go and repaint everything and put it together to finally so we're going to work on getting the, this, this part and then we're going to get the s pipe up in there so we got the exhaust kind of kind of somewhat installed we have it mounted here but we don't have none of the other clamps installed but we got everything to mount up and, and fit and it even you know kind of sits straight in the back there so we're good there we just need to take it back off now and then repaint it and we'll put it back on for good and then it is what it is i guess we got the exhaust repainted and we're ready to start putting it back on the bike so the first clamp that we got a system we got to work with is the 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 header pipe coming out of the out of the cylinder and it, and it loops to another clamp that hooks to the frame right here um, it's kind of bad because this this clamp that they're showing right here in this picture is if you don't pull it out and then squeeze it around you'll end up scratching the heck out of the frame and you can slide the other one around loosely and line it all up and then bolt it later so we're going to do that we're going to work on getting that clamp on the frame right now and then we'll work on putting these clamps on the muffler that is in this next page here on the other page before this is the knucklehead of course but it's a little different this is a 41 and that pipe is different as well but this clamp ends up hooking to the going up here on the 40 style on this 40 style uh, muffler because it's back farther so we're gonna put that on and then we'll still hang the one in the back that goes right here on the back of the muffler as well but this is the correct orientation of the hardware and stuff so we're going to be we're going to be doing it like this i just wanted to show you that quick and the s pipe i didn't really show this before when we had we're fitting it to fit but the s pipe goes on first and then it's a spacer then it's a switch lock washer and then hex nut so we'll, we'll set that up too when we uh when we put it all together so let's get going here so in this book, it talks about it's a knucklehead uh, engine, but um, of course the flathead's different because the layout's different on the pipes. So um, the pipe where it shows up here, it doesn't go there. It goes somewhere else. Um, I've looked at some other pictures and it doesn't really go into detail on where these go, but I think we kind of found where they should be and then where they line up. 
So we're going to go with this. I'm going to show you in a second where we put it at. It's kind of funny, but um, it'll all work out. Uh, that's about as far as we got so far. Looks good up the head. So right now, the pipe is really tight in the head, and it don't move at all. We have it clamped down here, clamped into the frame. This might be where it belongs, too. But it doesn't show anywhere, like I said. Clamp, clamp to one, clamp to the frame here, and then the other, front crane, uh, the other clamp is clamped to the pipe here. Right at the end of the joint. So it's, yeah, it's going to help hold that too. So that's also our... It holds it all up. It's solid. Yeah, and it doesn't move. And then we have... And then the other end of this is tightened up here. Right, so we have that all tightened up here and we're good here. So now we're going to work our way back. We're going to put the, the freshly painted uh, or now cured uh, pipe in here and get it going. And then we'll work on putting the muffler on. All right, so here we are. We got the exhaust all hooked up. Um... We got the the main pipe hooked to the frame here. We we had to loosen this up because we couldn't get the, the muffler to go in right. And then we had to re-tighten it all back up. But we originally tightened it up in the first segment to make sure that this was going to get as tight. And we could get it that way. Uh, we're sitting pretty good here. And then we have the main pipe, uh, the rear pipe coming down. And our muffler attached. And we do have the, the hardware all referenced the way it was back then. And... And then we also got the rear one back here all hooked up. And then this reinforcement bracket. Now, the best part is, is the kicker works. It, was, it clears the muffler, which is good. This is the, I know we talked about this before, but this is the 40 and older style kicker arm. And it's got this bed in it specifically for 40 because they changed this in 41. And yeah, they were more straight. Yeah, they were more straight. To get this, to give you more room on the floorboard without this hitting your leg. Yeah, so this might be a pain in the butt when I'm going to start this. <laughs> right. But anyways, the reason for this clearance though is actually, yeah, it's actually clearance. And it, it clears this muffler here when it comes down. Because in 41 they changed the muffler. And they yeah, put... This, this seam was back here. Otherwise it would have banged into it. So... Yeah, because like you said, the seam was back here. The rocket tip or the shark fin muffler that came out in 41 was shorter. and uh, This piece here was longer. Yeah, and there was actually a the, another section, wasn't it? The yes. Y section? Yes. Because they changed the S. It wasn't hooked to the muffler, which might have made this easier to put together. Yeah, because this was just a heck of a puzzle to put together. So now that it's been sitting a while, we know that the feed lines have been getting oil. The other thing I'm going to reference again is the fact that this oil line is clearing this, muff, this uh, exhaust pipe really nice because this is the feed line to the engine and this is high heat exhaust. <laughs> we don't want that interfering with oil going into the motor. Touch it. Yeah. We got all the mechanism hooked back up for the rear brake and it's all lined up good. And it, it actually still clears and everything, this uh, bracket for the floorboards. We're going to be ready to probably put the floorboards on too here. but. Yeah, maybe we'll just put them on. Here we are. We got the floorboard installed. This is the Half Moon floorboard. This is the first... 1940 was the first year the Half Moon floorboard and carried all the way on to... Jeez, forever. 60-something. 65, 68, 69? Still you think? on my 2010, except it's a vibrator. Oh, they, well, yeah. They changed, they changed throughout the years. Because they, they still had floorboards like this, but they got different shapes. Uh, they have uh, vibration dampeners built into the pad. Um, otherwise it's the same concept and same look so I'll just say it that way but um, anyways we have the hard correct hardware for 1940 and older bikes we had the round head slotted screw here because in 41 they went to a hex bolt and um, it probably would have made it easier for installation which is probably what um, why they went to the change but anyway it's all going the right way according to the parts book orientation and now we just gotta go over and do the other side and then we'll be ready to move on to something else with this. We got the we did install the floorboards we talked about earlier. We're gonna take this back off though when we go to put the outer primary on, but we need to check some stuff. So we got everything ready to go. We're gonna get ready to fire this up and get off the lift here um, to do that, but um, it's not quite winter yet. So if this runs, I'll be able to make my goal of having this thing run before at the end of the fall before winter. <laughs> It is December, but, uh, and maybe if everything works out here, we'll be able to finish it up before the first of the year. So, um, 
or maybe you'll be able to get it done in 2023. But anyways, we're going to be uh, getting ready to take it off the lift here. A lot of things are going to be going on. We're going to win, and if we get it running, we're going to be looking for the green LED to light up here. We're going to be watching. We're going to open this up and make sure we have oil flow coming back. We're going to be hoping to see the oil light come off and the generator light to come off when it's running. And then also on the other side, we're going to be making sure that uh, this belt travels true. It doesn't go into the inside. It just stays kind of like right here where it's at now. This would be perfect if it's sitting right here when it's running. So if it's if it gets if it starts running and everything, we'll make sure that we pan over those areas and look for that stuff. I'm not sure how well you're going to hear me talk when it's running. I don't know how loud it's going to be because I've never heard this exhaust running on this before. Um, this bike has been apart for a long time. So I'm kind of anxious, excited, and nervous all at once. This bike has at least been a part. Um, I'm going to do a benefit of doubt and just say 60 years, 60 plus years. And I've had it for quite some time, and it's been a part since then, since I first bought it too. So it's been a good 20 years or so. So I mean, anyway. So let's get ready to get it off lift here. Lower this down and... See what happens here. All right, we're gonna get ready to start this up. We got our our IV kind of here for the fuel tank, and we're gonna have that ready to go here in a minute. I'm gonna work on getting the bike off the lift and see if this thing starts. So here you go. I can hold on to that. Fuel line to the carburetor here. Try to put some fuel in. Accelerator pump kind of get wet first. It's kind of the first time the fuel has been in that carburetor since we tested it on a different bike earlier. All right, so when we get this thing running, we're going to be checking for the green LED on the regulator. We're going to be looking to see that the oil light goes off and the generator light on the other side goes off. Um, we're going to be checking for oil return because if the oil pressure light goes off, it could still not be returning properly. So we want to double check that. We'll check for voltage to make sure the um, charging system is working. I'm kind of anxious and excited. Catch my breath here. Okay, so um, when I go to, go to start this up, we want to make sure that we're on, on re, all the way to the on max retard on it. And then as soon as it fires up and runs, we want to advance it. Go all the way to the full advance. So, yeah, I think we're good now. I think it's got the choke shot. Yep, yeah, choke shot. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it some gas in the accelerator pump. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
have to make sure that the primary belt drive is just being not going in. So with us just having it running just now, um, we know that we have it, I don't know, it ran good. We don't, the timing, we're, we're good with the timing and everything. We don't have yep. to worry about testing it. So. I think we might have to uh, check the float height on this, since this carburetor is angling the other direction. It seems like it's, or the float height just might be off. It just seems like it's awful wet over here. Like the float height might be too high. We, that's something we didn't check, so we need to check it. Because uh, it seems to be pretty rich. So with us running it this way with the, this auxiliary fuel system here without having the tanks on, now we can let it go through its full heat cycle right now, cool down, and we'll be able to retorque the heads. And we'll be good. Yeah, because they're hot. All right, good. And it'll cool down naturally here in the building. So... We'll, we'll, um, we'll get this back on the lift now and then we'll go ahead and do the torquing, the retorquing of the heads and go from there. We got the 40 back over here on the lift and we, it's all cooled down now. Nice. It's nice and cool. Um, we're going to work on retorquing the heads, if anything. Now these uh, copper gaskets that we end up using were actually real thin. So I'd be really surprised if we really got get anything out of these. So we're going to just check them anyway. So we got the torque wrench set at 60 foot bounds. And we could just start here and we're gonna crack one. We're gonna crack one loose. Maybe. over here right yeah right there right <laughs> yeah there we go yeah Let's see what it does so and then we went back to here okay ready yeah we didn't get nothing out of it I okay didn't, i didn't think we would but we'll test it again test another one Right there. Straight. So, straight. All right, we're gonna check some more. Maybe, well, maybe this is good enough. But anyways, um, we'll get to that. We're gonna move on to doing that. So we just got done finishing up on testing these, and we're looking really good. Nothing really changed so our head retorque is is good to go so what we ended up doing was we took the we took this uh 
adjustable main jet out of this car where if you remember when we were talking it was kind of like pouring out the, not really pouring out but it was leaking out the side here so we're thinking that the adjustable main jet which i've heard there's been lots of problems with those allowing too much free flow of gas so we put a fixed jet in here and it's the correct jet for a 74 inch yeah, shovel head this is an a they made them in three sizes a b and a c the a is it has little two little holes that run the right that line up and run through here and the a is a 60 thousandths hole and each size jumps up like 10 thousandths and so so a b and c some so this, of them had c's some of them had b's but so this has been the correct uh fixed main jet for like a eight eight or nine hundred CC Sportster and a 74 inch, probably in like 71 Shovel or something, head. shovel head. Yep. Yep. Shovel. And then later they end up getting, they both got the same fixed jet. Well, they just, later, yeah, in later years, they did this to them. Right before they quit making these, they, they fixed it completely and put a plug in there and this it still has it still has the idle jet all the way running through it but it's non it's non removable so because people it, remove it and over jet their motor and do yeah. weird stuff to so it so if you're going to put an adjustable main jet in this one you got to knock that out and you got to drill and tap this thread out to it'll accept the threaded cut what part is that part number change on that or not yeah it's a b behind oh it. yeah 72b and this is a 70 um, just a 70 a 72a or 71 or 71 yeah so then anyway um there's mm. a couple different ones this this has the 36 we went 36 millimeter on this one now the, the 74 inch would have had a 38 millimeter 36 millimeter is practically i've said this before in a different video i know i have but the 36 millimeter is actually more equivalent to the 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 linker that would have been on here for size venturi size so anyway we're good there uh i think i think this kind of wraps up the getting it running stage we got uh, a little box of parts left to finish this up i think we're ready to move on to doing that and we'll probably do that in a different video you think of anything else we need to do right now no nope. so anyway i suppose we'll get going and we'll See you again soon and stuff. And I uh, hope you enjoyed everything on this one. It was pretty fun. Finally get to see it run. <laughs> pretty exciting. It's great. So this will turn out great, I'm thinking. So we'll see you again soon.